Good afternoon. This is going to be my first e-content lecture on optics. I'm very grateful to you Devanshi Chaube for helping me upload the content. Now as far as I can remember and I have confirmed from you, uh, we had left off immediately after diffraction uh, while discussing the double slit pattern. I was to begin with grading and then we started our presentations. So what I'm going to do is start right away with explaining what a grating is. The double slit is the simplest example of a grating, but credit must be given to Fraunhofer and how he developed the science of gratings. Also, I must point out that this particular lecture series is very important from the standpoint of practicals as well. You know very well that there is a practical based on grating in your semester. So you must understand the theory in order to appreciate the readings that you will be taking. What I will do is, I don't have access to the spectrometer, but I will be able to explain to you the settings that need to be done in order to obtain the grading spectra as we go along. So first, let's focus on the theory of a grading. Thank you. Next segment of grading, we will discuss the principal maxima. As you can see, I have written the expression for the amplitude square given by sine square n gamma upon sine square gamma. Now in this case, a square represents the intensity diffracted by a single slit. Its value when we substitute is given by a0 square sine square beta upon beta square. If we substitute this value in the above equation, we get an expression for the intensity in the Fraunhofer pattern for an ideal grating. And it comes out to be i is equal to a square. Now this is approximately a square because the intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude, not directly equal to it. But a square is given by a0 square sine square beta upon beta square sine square n gamma upon sine square gamma. Now n represents the number of slits. So if you substitute n equal to 2, you are going to get i is equal to a0 square sine square beta upon beta square sine square 2 gamma upon sine square gamma. You know the expression for sine 2 gamma will be 2 sine gamma cos gamma. Since this is sine square, we write down it equal to a0 square sine square beta upon beta square for sine square gamma cos square gamma upon sine square gamma. The sine square gamma cancels both in the numerator and denominator and you get i is equal to a0 square sine square beta upon beta square cos square gamma. This is an identical expression as for a double slit. Now let us discuss some salient features. This new factor that you get sine square and gamma upon sine square gamma may be said to represent the interference term for n slits. It will possess a maximum value equal to n square and these maxima are going to lie for values of gamma equal to 0, pi and 2 pi and so on. Now if you substitute the value of gamma as 0, pi, 2 pi etc. You will see that the quotient is actually indeterminate at these values. So the result can be obtained by noting that the limit of gamma tending to n pi sine n gamma upon sine gamma you differentiate the numerator and denominator you get limit gamma tending to m pi n cos n gamma upon cos gamma. When you make the substitution, you will get the result equal to plus minus n. And since the new factor is in square, so this is equal to n square. Further, these maxima correspond in position to those of the double slit. Since for these above values, d sine theta becomes equal to 0 lambda, 2 lambda, 3 lambda and so on to m lambda. So this is the expression for the principal maxima of an ideal grating. In fact, this is the grating equation. d sine theta is equal to m lambda. Now the relation between beta and gamma in terms of the slit width b and the slit separation d is given by delta upon 2 beta equal to gamma upon beta equal to d upon b. It is unchanged with respect to the double slit. Also, the condition for the missing orders d upon b is equal to m upon p where m and p are both integers this too remains unchanged so we can safely say 
that the double slit is a special case of the grating a double slit is the simplest example of a grating thank you as you can see from the white board i have written that it was fraunhofer in 1819 who discovered or rather made the first grating his grating consisted of winding fine wires around two screws now you can easily make these gratings by cutting narrow transparent lines in gelatin emulsion on a photographic plate the one single most striking feature of the grating pattern as you obtain is if you use monochromatic light is that as you increase the number of slits the principal maxima become very sharp and narrow also weak secondary maxima appear now if you can see i have put an asterisk sign around secondary and maxima why because the number of the secondary maxima increases as the number of slits is increased or as the number of slits increases now the very first thing that you need to know about the grating is how we calculate the intensity distribution from an ideal grating i'm sorry the board is shining a bit but uh, since i have spoken the title intensity distribution from an ideal grating all right now let's move ahead we will make use of the method of complex amplitudes you can see that i have written interference involving multiple reflections as the reference if you go back to your notes on the fabre perro interferometer you will find that i have used this technique to establish the sharpness of the amplitude obtained by multiple reflection now in the case of grating the situation is much simpler for reflection the amplitude goes on reducing you remember stokes treatment but over here the amplitudes contributed by the individual slits are all of equal magnitude hence it is easier to calculate the resultant amplitude we designate this magnitude by a so a is the amplitude that is being contributed by a single slit and the number of slits is designated by n the phase changes by an equal amount delta from one slit to the next so the resultant complex amplitude can be written down as a series given by a to a e to the i theta a e to the i theta and then i've written an expansion which goes as a within brackets 1 plus e to the i delta plus e to the i 2 delta plus e to the i 3 delta and so on since this is a geometrical progression you know the sum is going to be given by a 1 minus e to the minus i n delta divided by 1 minus e to the i delta the next step is that you multiply the previous expression by its complex conjugate so what we do is we multiply this expression by its complex conjugate so you get a square which is equal to a square 1 minus e to the i n delta upon 1 minus e to the i delta multiplied by 1 minus e to the minus i n delta upon 1 minus e to the minus i delta now when you expand the numerator you are going to get 1 minus e to the i n delta minus e to the minus i n delta plus 1 similarly in the denominator you will get 1 minus e to the i delta minus e to the minus i delta plus 1 so the ones are summed both in the numerator and the denominator and the resultant expression that you get is a square multiplied by first the numerator 2 minus then within the brackets we can write e to the i n delta plus e to the minus i n delta divided by 2 minus open brackets e to the i delta plus e to the minus i delta you know trigonometrically that e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is simply equal to 2 cos theta so you can write down the expression within the numerator brackets as 2 cos n delta similarly the expression within the denominator brackets can be written as 2 cos delta so you have the resultant expression for a square as a square is equal to a square 1 minus 
cos n delta upon 1 minus cos delta. Further utilizing the trigonometric identity that 1 minus cos, sorry there should be a delta here, my bad, just a minute, please give me some time, there should be a cos alpha here. So, 1 minus cos alpha is equal to 2 sine square alpha by 2. This is a trigonometric identity. So, if I write down the resultant expression now, you will have capital A square equal to small a square into 2 sin square n delta by 2 divided by 2 sin square delta by 2. And this becomes equal to capital A square sin square n gamma upon sin square gamma. Please recall that when we were doing or studying the double slit pattern, we had defined gamma to be equal to delta by 2. Delta by 2 is simply the difference pi d sin theta upon lambda. And this is the same as for a double slit. So what have we done? We have established the intensity distribution from an ideal grating. More in the next segment. Thank you for your time and attention.